on TV, online and on your smartphone. This is Ticker News. This episode of Talk Your Book is proudly brought to you by Honan, providing a complete range of insurance, risk and financial solutions. Bundy's called me up, told me to take a look, but stay stubborn as bulls and talk their own book. Get the money, get the money, get, get the money. Hi, I'm Chris Judd and this is Talk Your Book and today we're lucky to be joined by Nick Sladen from LSN Capital Partners. Nick, thanks very much for coming back on the show. Thanks Chris, it's good to be here again. Now you've had a couple of winners since you've been on. You had Pacific Smiles, which has now been... Uh, taken out and equity trustees I reckon was your last pick which performed well as well so I don't want you to feel any of that pressure weighing on your shoulders today. Yeah no it's been it's been um, been a good start with those two months Pacific uh, Smiles actually got another takeover bid this morning for the dollar 91 so. And, and, uh, and before we get into your pick of choice just talk us through LSN Capital Partners for those that haven't heard of you guys let us know what your investment philosophy is. Uh, LSN Capital Partners is a ASX small cap fund. We started in uh, the start of 2022, so we'll be three years at the end of this calendar year. Um, we've had a good first two financial years, delivering uh, 20, just over 20% last year and 23.5% the year before. So we're happy to hit our three year milestone in December and uh, we're growing nicely. And what stock did you want to talk about today? Uh, today we're talking about a business called Coventry Group. Um, its market cap is around 170, 180 million, so it's a small company. Um, it's relatively a liquid, um, but it's run by a good management team and it's got a good growth path ahead of it. Um, it probably falls into that industrial space of, um, of company um, that it's probably been a bit more challenged by the construction cycle over the last sorry, six to 12 to 18 months. But we're looking for businesses that are coming out the other side as construction starts to improve over the next 12 to 18 months. Um, you know, things like interest rate cuts, which are happening globally, will, will be tailwinds for small cap investing. And when they happen, interest rate cuts domestically will be good for these guys too. And give us a bit of an overview of the company's history and, and what their different mm -hmm. business divisions are. Yeah, the business has been around for a while. Uh, it's got two main divisions. Um, it's got trade distribution. Um, trade distribution is across a business of about 10 different brands. Um, one of their brands, Kinetics, got an, as an example, it's got about 80,000 SKUs within its portfolio. Um, so it provides really deep um, um, things like screws, uh, screws, nuts, bolts, fasteners. What are um, fasteners? Fasteners, it's all, it's all the componentry and screws and nuts and bolts that basically go into construction. Um, these guys specialise a lot in um, uh, construction for um, commercial construction, industrial businesses, you know, large scale, um, you know, work in terms of government spend. So that's, that's where their real bread and butter is. Probably less exposed to the residential um, side of the business. So probably that sort of downturn that they're seeing there in that construction market's probably less of an impact. But we think the tailwind that'll come through in construction and commercial markets um, as it recovers in 2025 will be a benefit for these guys. Um, the other side of the business, that's that business there, the fast, uh, the fast in the business um, trade distribution, it's around 55% of their revenue. Um, the other side of the business is their fluids business. Um, that probably specifically focuses on sort of mining, agriculture, uh, construction and manufacturing again, you know, things like, you know, um, refueling, um, um, hydraulics, all that type of stuff into the mining side of the business. That business has been performing really well. Um, EBITDA growth in FY24 was up over 25%. So that's performing pretty well in terms of that business. So that's about 45% of their business. So it's diversified across the two businesses. One of them being the tra trade distribution business is a little bit depressed at the moment. We're expecting the outlook to improve for that um, over the next 12 to 18 months. And the other business, um, uh, the fluids business is performing really well. And quite specialised looking from the outside, you know, briefly looking through the business, feels quite specialised. Does it feel like there is a lot of IP attached to the various different products and services as they, they do? Um, it's a very, very, very fragmented market in terms of the, uh, the, dis the trade distribution market. These guys are small. They've got less than 5% market share um, and, and there's a, it's a huge market and there's a lot and a lot of um, opportunity for growth. There's a lot of businesses that are sort of, um, that are probably finding it harder to compete on price and scale. Um, they might be, you know, small businesses. They're, you know, they've got one, two, or three stores. I should have said that um, that Coventry, as a group across its whole portfolio, has about 98 stores. Um, so, so they're continually um, growing and becoming, having more scale than some of their competitors. So, I would imagine that over the next, you know, 12 to 18 to 24 months, they'll continue to buy um, uh, the right type of businesses to bolt on. Pardon the pun. 
um, to their to their to their businesses. Um, they've already shown in uh, in this financial year, in FRI, the start of 2024, they bought one of their competitors in the fastener business, a business called Steelmasters. Um, so that effectively took out a competitor. Um, it gave them greater market share in that space. Um, it also provided them with, um, it's actually quite an opaque industry in terms of um, pricing and margin. And they got to, they got to see you know, how that business priced and, ma and, and made margins. That Steelmasters business actually made far higher margins than, um, than the core Coventry trade business. So they've been able to, to, to work that and, and match that together. And um, how's the integration look for the Steelmarkers acquisition so it, far? It's been fine. Yeah, no, they've been performing well. The business is, is going really well. They provided a trading update a couple of weeks ago um, where they came in ahead of guidance despite the difficulties that are being experienced in that construction side of the business and as I said the fluid side of the business is performing really well so they're, they're going quite nicely at the moment. And what's the sort of mix between servicing and recurring type revenues versus one-off mm. sort of transactional revenues? Yeah good question. Um, traditionally uh, in the, the, prob the, the, the fluid type of business is probably more when there's mining conditions are quite strong, um, that business is performing, performs quite well like we're seeing now, which is sort of 45% of revenue and it's growing quite nicely and profits are doing quite well. On the trade side of the business, where they're working and providing componentry for some of the large, uh, you know, whether it be infrastructure, government spend projects or commercial projects or stadium builds, you know, those, they've got good lead time of around 24 months on some of those businesses, on some of those projects rather. So there is an element of long lead time. So they do get good visibility. Um, but I guess the nature of the business is it's probably, you know, one off for the, for the specific project, but they do get good long-term visibility looking at some of those projects. And you mentioned that market share they've got, uh, I think it's less than 5% for both yeah. divisions. Do you see, um, them having the ability to continue to roll up businesses in terms of balance sheet capacity or do you think they're at a level now where they'll continue to roll up but to, to buy new businesses is going to require extra capital? Yeah, if, look, as I said earlier, they, they, they put their balance sheet to work a few months ago and bought Steelmasters, um, which is going very well. Um, we would expect more acquisitions, um, probably at the smaller scale end, maybe the sort of one, two or three in terms of the trade distribution side of the business, which is probably the less cyclical side of the business relative to the mining stuff. Um, but uh, their balance sheet was put to work, so they will need to reduce their debt a little bit over the coming months, but um, they've got an ERP program which their spend is coming to an end over the coming months, which we can touch on in a minute, so that'll free up some cash flow. And the other one is they're sitting on over $60 million in tax losses, so they don't need to pay tax anytime soon. So we're expecting the debt to come down pretty quickly um, to, to sub you know, one and a half times net debt to EBITDA probably in this, or this financial year, which will give them capacity to continue to grow um, from, an, from an inorganic perspective. And patent recognition is such a big thing in investing. And you mentioned <coughs> trade distribution. Uh, Reese is a stock that comes to mind have just uh, done mind-blowingly well for in investors with um, that distrib distribution model they have for, for plumbing supplies. Is there some similarities in this type of business to, to Reese, albeit on a much, much smaller scale? Look, the market that they operate in is, um, is a very big market. That, that trade, trade nuts and bolts fasteners market, it's a very big market. So it's hugely fragmented. It's very opaque in terms of its pricing structure. So there is an opportunity um, for a consolidator, um, particularly as some of the other competitors in the space are probably you know, businesses that don't have great succession plans. So you can either buy those businesses or it's a very relationship based businesses. So what they've actually done in, in many of the regional markets is they'll go and take a business out um, but you're buying the relationships, you're working with the existing proprietor to, to, to arrange that succession. So there is some sort of reach. The chairman spent many years, um, the chairman of Coventry spent many years um, on the, involved at Reese, so he's got good experience there. So there is sort of some similarities, and if they can be anywhere as successful yeah. as that business, it'll be a great investment. And you mentioned the ERP program uh, that they've been spending money on, also store refurbs they've been spending some money mm -hmm. on. Give us an insight into the quantum of money they've been spending, particularly on the ARP program, and, and how close that is to being, being finalised. Well, this is, as I said earlier, it's a small company. The market cap's 170, 180 million, and they've spent, they're planning on spending um, about $17 million. They've spent about 14 to date. Um, they're piloting and testing the new ARP um, Enterprise Resource Planning Agreement. That'll basically provide them with um, improved customer service, improved pricing transparency, uh, it'll provide them with far improved um, inventory availability, which is very important because they run at about 90% inventory availability in that trade business. 
um, and they can probably run high 90. So you're probably losing five or six percentage points of sales just by having the system and the inventory better managed. So it's almost like a mini takeover in itself, isn't yeah, it? If you, yeah. you spend that much money and, and get an immediate response. That's right. So we're expecting from 2025, um, we'll start to see some of the benefits of that. Um, and it is going, it all, it's all going all to plan at the moment. They confirmed that the other day. So that's quite excited about the next, the outlook there. And so maybe just give us, you've touched on some of these numbers already. Just just give us the overview. What what their revenue is now, what sort of revenue growth you can see them having and maybe what their PE, PE is yep. now. Um, we've got on our, on our numbers, it's not a particularly well covered stock, which is something that we like. Uh, we like uh, where we can go out, speak to competitors, speak to management, understand the business a little bit more. Um, we've got um, earnings per share growth of around 80% in FY25 mm. uh, and over 30% in FY26. FY25 obviously is benefiting from the Steelmasters acquisition where they put their balance sheet to work a few months ago. Um, that was over 30% accretive. Um, but as I said, the, the fluids business is performing well um, and the trade business is it's got um, a range of um, initiatives in place like the EARP to ensure it can continue to perform okay in a challenging market. And then when the market tailwinds start to improve, it's really well placed to, to perform. So it does, um, this year it's gonna do just over $20 million in EBITDA. We think they can do probably close, you know, close to $30 million in, in that next year. They'll probably, that doesn't factor in um, debt repayment and any more additional bolt-on acquisitions that they can make in that space. So really attractive growth profile. Um, revenue growth, the trade distribution business revenues broadly give or take a little bit flat because it's a tough market. The other business is growing high single digits um, with an improving outlook on the trade side. So it's, you know, put the mix together, it's mid, mid to high single digit growth on our look. On, and, on our numbers. And under research, but are quite a few funds on the register. Do you know off the top of your head what sort of free float there is on the, on the stock? Yeah, look, um, well, the, the managing director, CEO, holds about 1% which is always good. We like to see executives with some skin in the game. Um, and the rest of the register is pretty concentrated. There's probably half the registers tied up with insiders or long-term institutions. I've been them at 25%, aren't they? Yeah, it's they're alone. quite big. Yep, yep, yep. So yeah, so tied up with sort of long-term um, investors. So yeah, which, which is what we like, long-term supporters of the company. Uh, and we see considerable upside. Trades on around, on our about 10 times earnings. Um, and, uh, for pretty, pretty heavy earnings growth. And just to finish off, it feels like, you know, particularly people with a, a global mindset or looking at the US, the mega cap tech stocks have been the only game in town for a considerable period of time. It feels like uh, there is a bit of a great rotation over there from tech stocks into the Russell 2000. Do you think we're going to see that, that type of rotation here? And is this sort of an industrial type stock, which perhaps is considered a little bit boring compared to Microsoft or Nvidia, where investors are going to become more interested in going forward? Yeah, look, I think that's one of the things we've consistently spoken about over the last six to 12 months is a broadening of market returns. You touched on what the returns in the US market for. Like use the ASX 300 as an example, did 11.9% um, for FY24. 65% of that return came from eight stocks, you know, your Goodman Group, the banks, West Farmers, et cetera. So, you know, is Goodman Group gonna go up another 100% next year? Possibly probably not likely. So we expect a more broadening of returns and we see opportunities like this, you know, with really heavy, um, strong growth profiles is looking pretty attractive. That's where we're allocating our capital. Awesome, well, thanks very much for walking us through it. It was very, uh, very sharp as always. Thanks, Chris, good to be here. Thanks for watching Talkie Book. We'll be back at the same time next week. You're watching Ticker. We'll have more in just a few minutes.